sister! Why are you here? Enough! Let's go back home! Show you! Put you on Greetings! <laughs> this is Top Tier Tips! Greetings everyone, this is Force Nature coming at you with another Soul Calibur 6 guide. In this session we're going to be taking a look at Sophitia's younger sister, Cassandra Alexandra. Cassandra, who? Just kidding. Cassandra is a close range fighter with a potentially very dangerous offense. You see, similar to Amy, Cassandra has a powered up mode called Divine Force. So if I were to do something like 6A plus B, forward A plus B, she is now charged up. So, you see right now that Cassandra is glowing. If Cassandra is glowing, that means she's now possessed with Divine Force. What Divine Force does is it gives you access to some more kind of powered up moves, so some more powered up offense. Now, for instance, if I were to use something like forward uh, B, A plus B. This is one of the moves called a Holy Smite. Holy Smites are moves that expend your Divine Force for the additional damage. A perk of Divine Force is that you gain access to some divine ranged moves or like seismic moves. For instance, any of the down A plus B inputs, let's say for instance down 4 A plus B or 3 A plus B, you get the ranged projectile. Uh, 2 A plus B would get the mid projectile. And 1 A plus B is a close range projectile which will also can commonly be used as like a I guess as part of like combos or to be able to damage an opponent that like stays down or stuff like that so 1A plus B from Divine Force can be pretty useful. Despite her average size appearance, Cassandra can be considered a bit of a grappler. Alright, I'll just show you right now that she does have an air catch throw, her 8B plus K. And right there, and instead of jumping on the opponent, that stance you have that, or that mounted stance right there, is called Titanic Struggle. In that move, uh, if you go into that stance, you have the opportunity to deal more damage to your opponent by hitting either A, B, K, or back A, B, or back A, back B, or back K. So there's two primary options. However, I'll just go over the Divine Force option right now. So. If you press A plus B while under the Divine Force, you can blow up the hell out of your opponent. Unfortunately, it damages Cassandra a little bit, but it just feels completely epic when you do perform it. But dude, yeah, I mean, use at your own discretion. Some ways to enter into the Divine Force. You can use 6A plus B. So right there, you're tracking high. Uh, another good option is your forward back or 6-4A plus G or A throw. 50 damage. Puts you in Divine Force. You can also use... 4 B plus K or even like BBB. Even though the, the move that leads into the Divine Force can be a bit of a telegraphed high, so you have to be a little careful with that one. And also, if you were, for instance, to go into Titanic Struggle off of something like... I'll, I'll just use an example move right here. So you can do 6K on counter hit or 6K hold. And just press any button, like A, B, or K. And right there, you go into Divine Force and you um, you do like solid damage. Also, any of like... um Kind of like... Um, any of like Cassandra's kind of like auto GI or like G or GI moves can usually also go into Divine Force or can lead to like a lethal hit. 6-6-A plus B4 is also another nice option for putting yourself into Divine Force. While under Divine Force, a go-to kind of um, setup that you can do is just something simply like after a 3B launch, uh, do 6-B-A plus B right there and you get like pretty good damage for that. You can also hit off of something like her quarter circle A, now A plus B, six. And then after that, you could do um, six B plus K A, and the A part can also be just frame, which is um, pretty cool. And this is, of course, on top of the different explosions that you can also get, explosive holy smites that you can also get at Divine Force. And if you haven't noticed, Cassandra really likes using her booty. She likes... ...sitting on people's faces. As I mentioned earlier, Cassandra is a close-range fighter. So naturally that means that she wants to fight up in the opponent's grill. But on the other hand, that basically means that she's not really very adept at fighting at range, even though she technically does have some range moves like 4A plus B. But her toolkit is just generally not really suited for ranged fighting. 
So, so, but on the plus side of that, to kind of balance it out, she is quite safe on like a lot of her pokes. It's like even sub. I mean, of course, she has like a fundamental um, 12 frame AA with a third hit, also a high. She has a fundamental 14 frame BB with the last hit that is that that, that charge up high attack that goes into divine force, and also, and she also has like good stuff like. Um, BK, which is actually um, like advantage on block, so it can allow you to like kind of do like an AA or, or something like that. Also, and of course, any of your usual high attacks like forward AA, um, six A plus B. It's also like an um, advantage on block. Like a lot of her like high attacks and a lot of her close range pokes are safe, but unfortunately, stuff like some of her like close range kick attacks like. Like um, 3AK or AK, those ones are actually unsafe on block, and you can get AA punished for them. So be a little close, a little careful with their close range kicks. But a, a lot of her like highs and stuff like that, and even like her mid stuff like 6-6, six, six, like BB, a lot of her moves are really safe on block. So you can usually like pressure well without. You can usually pressure without much fear of being punished with Cassandra once you do get in. Since the objective with Cassandra is to get in on your opponent, that um, game plan is augmented by her special movement or stances. For instance, the stance that you're prim primarily going to be using for trying to get in on your opponent is her Angel Step, the quarter circle stance. As you saw there, there's a little GI flash right there, so that can GI like um, horizontal attacks like AAs or 6As and stuff like that. So, and if, and if you do get the if you do get the auto GI off it, and you end up, um, and you end up basically doing one of the kind of follow-up moves off of it, such as like quarter circle B, then the then the, the quarter circle B would end up being a uh, lead into a lethal hit off it, which is um pr pretty cool if you end up GI if you end up like GI in something and going into the B option. All right, but as for other options out of um Angel Step, like you do have the the quarter circle B, which also can be can be used at like the end of like a combo like something like simple like that you also have quarter circle a b i'll let you know that is unsafe on block but the angel step not only does it have a gi it also like uh tech crouches so like, it goes under high as well so generally if you think the opponent's gonna do a high then angel step will end up um, being able to go under it quite well and then that's when you can usually nail someone with this otherwise it would be unsafe when blocked Quarter Circle B, I think, is also unsafe. So if you do want a safe option out of Angel Step as opposed to just simply just doing the stance, you have qu Quarter Circle K. This is a new move here. It's it's only light negative on it's only light negative on block, and it does force Crouch. So it is fully safe from punishment, and the uh, opponent doesn't really have too many options with um with regards to retaliation because it's only like light negative, like my only minus four or less. Plus some um, force and plus force and crouch. So this is a pretty good move, and you see it always knocks down even on normal hit. So that's that's also right there is a nice option. Angel step also has a special side step, just simply called angel side step, right there. So if you do quarter circle four up or quarter circle f or quarter circle forward down, then you'll end up going to uh, you'll do the angel step into a side step to the left or right respectively, and um, yeah, like so. And if you want to do a uh, angel step, angel side step, then another angel step again. You quarter circle forward up, then forward again, or quarter circle, uh, quarter circle forward down, then forward again. So you get two angel steps with the side step in between and two auto GIs. So that's um pretty nifty. All right, now for our, another primary stance with uh, Cassandra is her quarter circle back. This is angelic twirl or angel twirl or AT. All right, this stance similar to angel step has its own GI. This one's for against mid, so it's good against like. BBs and like similar really moves like that and there's also its own set of options out of angelic twirl for instance angelic twirl angelic twirl a is this like long range horizontal move it's a little slow and a little well telegraphed but if the opponent like gives you an opening or like whiffs or something like that you can use this to get in because despite how the animation looks this move is safe on block which is actually pretty cool I mean it does it does decent a uh, decent enough damage and, and while well, you're in and you're in while safe from punishment. All right, and a good option out of Angel Twirl, but from a bit closer, is Quarter Circle Back A. All right, so this move, this move right here, it does a knock, it does a knock back, a pretty, uh, fairly hard knockdown on um, a normal hit. The main thing about this move is that, well, it is a high, but if it gets blocked, it leaves you at advantage, like about plus four, so you can do like an AA or BB for free, pretty much. 
Zan, and it just looks... This looks like awesome how Cassandra's just kicking the opponent with her shield. <laughs> Alright, so another option that you can also do out of uh, Angel Electoral is her... Is her Angel Electoral BB. So right here, the move is also safe on block. It's a, it's a two-hit string. It um, forces Crouch. It ends up, um, yeah. Forces Crouch on the opponent. You can actually charge the second hit. If I can charge it properly right now. Right there, you either get a launcher, or if it gets blocked, you're at a frame advantage guard, guard break. So, of course, you get a free AA to try and, like, stuff any sort of, like, retaliation. So, this is also a good move right here. I will also give you a, a heads up, though. If you end up using um, Angel moves too much, you may notice that majority of the options are either are either safe on block or... They're, they're either safe on block or advantage. If you use them... Too much, as you can see right there, the guard gauge ends up starts to flash because the trade-off for this is that it uses up your guard stamina. Like the moves out of Angel Step don't do that, but they're also not they're not they're not as safe to toss out, or they're not like they're not like safe on block. So moves like 4A plus B or anything from Angel Tour will reduce your guard stamina. The way how you end up getting your guard stamina back is by using Holy Smite moves. Divine Force moves that expend the... Well, the, the Divine Force meter. If you'd like some moves to complement Cassandra's approaches with Angel Step or Angelic Twirl, and I'll let you know you can actually combine the two if you do Quarter Circle Forward Back. Then it'll cancel into Angel Twirl, which is pretty cool. But for some moves that you can use, like, on approach, like... 666A six, 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 six is a nice move right here. It's safe on blog, like, around, like, minus 8. It's light advantage on hit. It's a horizontal mid. So it will kill Step nicely, so... It's basically not much risk of this as long as you're not like really whiffing it or anything. It's got solid range, so 66A is nice. Another move you can use is anything out of her 66B string. Even something simply like 66BB. It will be safe on block, does decent damage. So, I mean, that's nice. But the thing, there's also strings like 66BA right there. It has a safe high option. Or you can just like finish the string altogether. There's three moves. 66BAB, you'll be minus 10 on blocks. So that means only really, only really talky or other characters that have like a 10 frame punish can really punish you for that. But um, the last hit's a mid. So you can actually get a mix it now if you use, if you use 66BAK instead. And honestly, you should probably use this option first and they start ducking, then you can start going for like the, the mid option or even you can even just do 66BB, 66BA, so there's like a lot of potential to kind of like mix up the opponent a little bit by like some um, throwing off their like timing and their expectation of like where you'll end. You do a careful have to watch out that's the 66B string or like or anything out of it is a uh, vertical move so it is it is linear so you have to watch out for opponents that are just simply to sidestep you and then end up punishing you for it. So I mean as an alternative you can use, well, I mean apart from the, the 66A you can also use 66A8. Uh, be careful for opponents that do duck the second hit, so you do have 6A B option. I'll let you know 6A B is safe on block around like minus 5 or minus 6, so this move is pretty safe on block. But if you get the opponent to block the second hit of 6AA, you'll be at um light advantage, so enough to get in a free AA like a like around plus two or so. Same with like with like um 6A plus B or or if you do like 2 2 or 8 8, so this 8 way run, sidestep, 2 2 A right there. Like, like any any of those type of moves tend to be um, plus 2 on blocks. That means if the, if the opponent blocks and you can stop falls so with like AA or like go for like a 2 A or something like that. So I'm. Um, yeah, so this, that kind of stuff is um, pr pretty good though. So. Like I said, um. Honestly, the only real kind of weakness with Cassandra's moves is you just have to like kind of watch your range. Once you get in your opponent, you're now in Cassandra's comfort zone. So, so you can do your stuff like your generic AA, BB, throws. Also good. If you like a mix-up, you got 1K, 1B. 1B is actually kind of a neat move. If you charge it on a downed opponent, then you get a free... Titanic, you get a free Titanic struggle setup. Although the move can be can be sidestepped or kind of like I think even possibly tech rolled, so you have to be a bit careful. But similar to 1K and 1B, it's um, harder to react to. 
You also have um, 1A, which is a kind of a typical low sweeping, sweeping low. It would, it would, uh, well, it would knock down on counter hit. On normal hit, it just kind of, it just kind of trips up the opponent slightly. So right there, so it's not as good as like um, 1As in like previous Soul Calibers, but it's still pretty standard. Oh, uh, in close range, a nice move with uh, Cassandra is her BK. I, mean, I sh showed you this earlier. The second hit's a high, but it um, well, it's advantage on block, so you get a free like AA afterwards. And of course, I mean the the opponent has to has to be keeping keep in mind if you're just gonna do BB BK, and if you manage to get the third hit of BBB blocked, you'll be neutral on guard, so an A would clash with the opponent's 12 frame move or 12 frame A. Although I mean it's a slow move, so the opponent can crouch, crouch under it. Um, all right, so other things. If you, as I said, you also have um, B B B K. If you hold down the B, then you get this hit status right here. That's the same as a good, a good sidestep move with Cassandra is her two two B or sidestep B or eight way run B, whatever you want to call it. The main thing about this move is it gives Cassandra a free. Uh, crouch throw attempt. Yes, I said that Cassandra's a bit of a grappler here. She has... Uh, not that. She has... Crouch throws to give dude in the opponent's back. Uh, I'll go over throws a little later, but I'll let you know that she has multiple crouch throws and stuff like that, and it can even lead into her... Can, can even lead into her titanic struggle, like I could just show you right now. And just drop the booty on the face. Right there. So yeah, that's pretty good, and... Hold down B, and you can do the same thing. In general, actually, Cassandra's moves are pretty nice, though. Like her... Like, 2-2-A-A two, two, A is um, plus 2 on block, so it's an advantage. 2-2-B two, two, is only, like, minus 2 on block, so this... And, and for anything that, that gives you free ground throws is good with Cassandra. Like, I'm not a huge fan of her low, low game, even if I do... Even if I do like the kind of like low off that, even though I mean it's a bit more of a telegraph string and that's off of a more of a mid-range move. I mean, like 1k is good for kind of sneaking a low. It, it is advantage when it gets hit, but it's, a, it's similar to like 1a. It is unsafe even though it's it's hard to react to. But honestly with uh, Cassandra, the main thing which I would like is to try and like sneak in her throws. Like, I guess, uh, I'll, set, uh, set, I'll go over it later, but it's just her, her throw game is pre pretty integral for her gameplay. I mean for augmenting her close range. Mix up, so yeah, I'll just let you know that her, her throw game is quite good. It's not quite as um, dangerous as someone like Ivy's, but it's still pretty good. If you'd like a fairly quick, decent poke from mid range, you can use Cassandra's B6 right there. It comes out fairly fast, is safe on block, is um, light advantage on hit, like around like plus two, and it, it does that, it does push back the opponent a bit also. But I mean, it, this is mainly just used, not that, it's mainly just used as like a poke. Um, if you're slightly closer, then you can use her... You could use her B2, like it's basically right there. If you hold it down, you stun the opponent, and if you... If you just press it, and you just get like a little low poke, so that, that's, that's an okay option right there. And especially if you get it charged and you get the stun... You can do like 6-6-BB six, six, uh, six, six on the opponent. To further augment the B string in close range, apart from doing like BB, BK... B holds, it's a bunch of options. You can also do BB 6B, which is an alternative to just doing BBB. So you have a, well, less telegraph option. It's kind of like a, uh, this is BB 6B, so BB 4B. So think of it as kind of like a cancel into a mid that's also um, safe on block and launches on, um, even on normal hit. It's the same with 4B plus K. If you press forward, then you'll cancel. If you don't press anything, then you'll just do the normal move. But then you cancel and you kind of get like the same move, so that's pretty neat. If you want to get cheeky with Cassandra in close, then just smack him with your shield. Right there, A6AA. Like you have to do this string like reasonably quickly or you'll just get like AAA. Um, it is safe on block and it does do like... Does do like... Okay-ish damage if the, the full string hits. It, it is all highs, but it, it is safe and you see it ends up um, knocking down there. Not necessarily like a huge fan of that. I mean, I... Do just prefer just doing simple AAs, but you, but you do kind of get swag points when you do smack down the opponent. I mean, Cassandra, all about the shield bashing and the booty. Talking about the booty, this move's like only like minus two on block, so you can use this move on approach two if you want. Also, 
I mean, the booty's not just for shit. Sure. Another good option that you can use with Cassandra in close is her 6B string. I mean, like pretty much almost majority of Cassandra's good options, it is safe on block. This move is similar to quarter circle back BB. Um, it's the chargeable option doesn't quite, like, um, doesn't launch the opponent. What it does if you do 6 BB hold, like, this is the normal one. Always forces crouch, but the second hit ends up um, just giving you a free knockdown. And, of course, you usually get a, a free 6-6 six, six BB after, like, a hard, a hard knockdown, so... So, yeah, this move is pretty good, and, I mean, it's just a... Cassandra has quite a bit of options to kind of like harass an opponent in close, so I mean, and generally bashing with your shield is always good, and I always generally like forcing crouch on the opponent because it does make it a bit, it, well, it does make it a bit harder for them to end up doing, to mount any sort of like um, quality retaliation on you, like if you're, if you're only like light negative after, not that move, after light, if you're light negative after a move that forces crouch, like this move is only like... This move is only like minus four or so on block, so I mean, all you can really do is like just basically all they can do is like a, a fast wall rise and poke his retaliation to stop you from trying to like AA or BB to end up stopping like um retaliation. And if you're fast enough and they stay in crouch, you could try and do a crouch throw too. If you'd like a high crush option in close range, you can use Cassandra's 2B plus K. On counter hit, the move, the, the move can start combos. Uh, a good follow-up that you can do off of this is just take the... You can go for a guaranteed ground throw with um, 2A plus G or basically any of your crouch options right there. Like that's 1A plus G there. So so this move is pretty nice for blowing up opponents that like to use highs a lot. And you'll counter hit them for... You'll counter hit them for a free crouch throw attempt. If you'd like a good auto side set move with Cassandra, you can use her B plus K. See right here, it has a fall up in B plus K B. The second hit can be chargeable to launch the opponent over. Otherwise, you just to simply do damage while at an advantage. So if you end up charging the second hit, you can end up launching them over and end up doing like a small juggle after. When you're fighting with Cassandra around mid-range, apart from just getting on your point with stuff like um 66A, the 66B strings, or even using the booty. Another strategy you can also go is to try and hover around like mid-range. Let's say you're finding another close range fighter like Sophie right now and you want to kind of just keep her away. What you can try and do is try and like either whiff punish or intercept something with with 668 plus B4, which puts you into Divine Force and does pretty solid damage. Alright, this move is fairly unsafe on block, so yeah, you, you don't want to just chuck it out willy-nilly because again... Cassandra has a bunch of moves that you can like chuck out if you want to like go into like the fine force or anything like that uh, If you are kind of like hopping around mid-range and also looking to whip punish stuff I mean just like pretty much majority of the characters in the cast Cassandra does have a fundamental 3b and you can like do 6b a plus b for instance if you're in If you're in a uh, D divine force if you want to get some solid damage There's also another combo you can do like involving like there's another combo also that's like involved in like BBB, but the timing for it is a bit tighter and um... Are you, oh yeah, you, the timing's tighter if you want to do it in a way where the opponent can't really air control it out of it easily. And you also can like do stuff like um... Like 3B into like a, a 4K and do like a 1B finisher. Be careful though that the opponent can... It's because you're doing a full hold on the B, the opponent can tech roll out of it so yeah you do have to be like a little like um careful with that if you just want really simple go-to damage you can just do 6 bb after a 3b but yeah 3b and uh 6 6 a plus b4 will be go to mid-range kind of like um well with punishers this can be on top of any kind of like stance shenanigans like i showed earlier that um like angel step does have many options to go into like, uh, angel step sidestep you could cancel into a twirl so while you're trying to set this up at range, then you can sneak in the... You could sneak in, for instance, the A option. I already said right now that's it's um, not too negative on block. Like, even after it gets blocked, you can try and 2 way the opponent or... Or try and, like, um, 2B, 2B the opponent. So basically, if, they, if you think they're going to retaliate with an A, you do 2A. If you think they're going to retaliate with, like, 
a BB or something like that, then you use 2B. Again, free, um, free crouch throw if it ends up gets them blocked. So... Oh yeah, and also I rem remember I also said earlier that the options out of here do reduce your guard gauge. So yeah, you can't use them too freely. But simply going into the Angel Twirl doesn't reduce the guard regard stamina. It's just simply the, the three primary options out of it. Like all of the options are, all of the options are pretty good. The K options, uh, the shorter range, the one where the, the B option is a bit more rangy. No, it's two hit, and of course the A option has the the most range, but um. You, you do have to adopt your reaction based on how the opponent reacts. Like you have your GI, you have your GIs against horizontals. You have your GI against them um, vertical. So, so you can kind of like mix things around a bit. But yeah, this fighting around mid range is just an option if you do want to keep out another close range fighter. But in general, yeah, with Cassandra, her strengths do generally lie with just simply getting in on your opponent. To complement Cassandra's two stances like Angel Step or Angel Lip Twirl, she also has a couple um, auto GI strikes such as 4A or 4B. Uh, 4A can parry highs like AA and 4B parries mids such as uh, BB. So essentially if you kind of know if the, if the opponent's going to do like an AA or a BB then you can end up using this move you can use this as a parry move to end up countering their move. And if you counter it, you also get um, Divine Force. At range with Cassandra, you can also harness your inner Captain America and she has a shield toss, 4 A plus B. See, this move, as you see, can be used to bring in the opponent from range. Like, it goes pretty far. Though the move's primary weakness is that if you expend it a lot, it does use up your guard gauge a lot. Same with something also like 6 uh, B plus K. You notice how you see this uh, kind of blue flash? That usually indicates that you're using a move that ends up expending your your guard gauge. You can see it's flashing right now. So anything from Angelic Twirl, like 4A plus B, any move with that blue flash ends up causing. I mean, and not the blue flash from, uh, and then not the cart, the blue flash from a just from a just frame, but just normal. You see the flash that you see right there. And I already showed you the gimmick that you can use Holy Smite ranged attacks with like 2A plus B or 3A plus B while in Divine Force. I mean, it is a bit of a gimmick, but it's it's one of those kind of techniques where it's just something that the opponent has to account for if you are kind of like hanging back at range and are in Divine Force. So, I mean, occasionally you can kind of catch an opponent with that, but I'll just say it is mostly a gimmick. And those type of moves do end up working best, like when the opponent's downed or like in the middle of like combos or anything like that. To so run up the guard gauge with Cassandra on your opponent, some go to moves you can use is stuff like your A plus B, your standard guard break move. So, Runs up pretty well, 15%, leaves you at around like plus 4. You can also use uh, 6BB or just say at a forward bash, shield bash. It's similar to quarter circle bat BB, which is similar and also run, runs up the gauge well. Other moves like uh, BB 6B or BBB, although it will be a bit easier to sneak in the. To sneak, to sneak in the alternative as opposed to going for the high. So generally, yeah, a lot of moves, a lot of moves that basically just end up using the shield tend to be quite good. Quarter circle K is also in quite good. Like all of these options are either safe or advantage. You can also run it up with like um, 6A. It doesn't run up the guard gauge as much, but it's it's advantage on block. Uh, 2 2 2 2 B is also really good. 2-2-A-A is okay. You can also break it with 2-2-B. Uh, so then 2-2-B being only like minus 2 on blocks also really nice. That's the same as like BB. Like BB also runs also runs up the guard gauge pretty decently. About almost the same as 2-2-B. So yeah, so generally majority of your, your shield moves will be really nice for running up the guard gauge. Even 6-6-BB is okay. 6-K is also good for running up the, the guard gauge. Like, you get a decent amount of without charge. And I've already showed you earlier how good this move is when it hits on, like, counter hit or if you charge it. And if you can get... And if you actually have an opponent that's kind of frozen up or anything, then... If you get the fully charged version, then it runs up the guard gauge quite a lot. 
When you have the opponent's guard stamina gauge at in red, then you can break the guard gauge with a lot of the same moves that you have used to run it up. Generally, your shield bashes. 6B. 6K. 66B A B. 22B. B hold. I mean, there's like a lot of even. Or not that. Even, um. 4-4 B plus K, the booty can break it. Unfortunately, the normal booty can't, but there's still like a, a lot of options you can use. 6-6, A plus B. Hell, even your main break attack, A, a plus B, not only does it run up the guard gauge a lot, but it also can break the guard gauge. After you get a guard burst, then you can use launch with like a um, 3B, 6-6, B plus K. So you can generally get your option for follow-up. Cassandra's throw game is pretty good. Although I admit that her throw range leaves a little to be desired though. I mean, when you do get in with Cassandra, then you can sneak in your throws pretty easily with her. Like here's her standard A plus G or A throw. Here's her back four, or four A plus G or just back A throw. She also has like a couple command throws such as um, a forward back or six four A plus G right there. 50 damage puts you into the Divine Force, and her other her other command grab is forward, forward, A plus G. Then you can do like a small juggle off of there with 6, B plus K, A, right there, and you get 60 damage. So essentially, if you need Divine Force, oh, not that, oh my god. If you need Divine Force, do forward, back, um, A plus G throw right there, and if you just want to do damage, just use the forward, forward, A throw. Here's Cassandra's left side throw, gives you 61 damage. So right side throw does about the same damage and her back throw gives her 70 damage. And you see right there, she also got some um, divine force from there. So yes, her back throw is really dangerous. All right, she also has, uh, as you know, some like couple specialty throws. The common one, of course, is she has an air catch throw, just eight B plus G. Puts you into um, Titanic Struggle. All right, S same kind of idea with like when you did like deciding like what throw to use. All right, with Titanic Struggle, if you just press the A, K, or B, then then right there you do an, an you you do an attack. You do your option that ends up giving you Divine Force. And if you just want to like do a little a little extra damage, for instance, then back for A, B, B, K, or back. 4A, back B or back K, like whatever, whatever option, just do it. Uh, for the opponent to break it though, they need to guess if you're either doing the A, B, K, or if you're doing the back A, back B, back K. So just keep that in mind though for the opponent trying to break the throw. But even then, going into going into Titanic struggle is generally like very useful. I, I mean, for anyone that's played like grapplers in any fighting games, mount stances are usually very beneficial for you. And I already sh showed you earlier that if you Press the A plus B option. You can do the most damage even though you you blast both of yourselves away and you do a bit of damage to your yourself, but it still looks pretty epic and probably mildly demoralizing if your opponent gets hit by that. And for specialty throws with Cassandra, she also has, I think I might have shown you a couple crouch throws. Two A uh, two A plus G right there is the first crouch throw or down A plus G and one A plus G. Generally, all right, for this one, it's almost kind of the, for this one, it's determining whether you want to set up Titanic Struggle or if you just want to kind of just go for straight up damage. So two A plus G, press the K button, and now you can go into Titanic Struggle and then you can go for one of the two options after there. So if you were to go for the other, if you go for the other option, I'll oh, stop doing that. 
then it just automatically just goes for a throw. And you see right there, it sets up quite a lot, a lot of damage. You don't have to worry about going into Titanic Struggle on the opponent, like, like breaking that throw or anything like, like that. Although you do have to be careful if the opponent like tries to do like a break on the other throws. But still though, it's either down A plus G or one A plus G there. It's just choose whatever option number one that you think the opponent's not going to try and break. And number two, you end up just like going for the option for what you want to try and do. When you have the opponent back in the corner with Cassandra, you can end up wall slamming them with stuff like 3B or even the booty, forward, forward K or 6-6K. After you wall slam the opponent, you can end up using um, stuff like this as their follow. Folks, it's time to supercharge Cassandra. Alright, naturally out of soul charge, Cassandra gains additional moves, such as an extra B to her BBB string, so it becomes BBBB. Although, out of her angelic twirl and soul charge, she gains a couple particularly like crazy moves, like quarter circle back A, which becomes a positive guard break. She gains a new move, which is quarter circle back A plus B there, also a positive guard break. Some other moves she gets is her... She gains a follow-up to her... To her 1k, to, to her low k string, and... There are some other moves, but she also... She gets a supercharged version of her crouching, um, her 1a a plus g, so her one... Or her down back crouch throw. And also out of it, she also gains stuff like the extra move out of her 4 B plus K even though I'm not a huge fan of that move. She also gains a fall like there but uh, under under soul charge quarter circle back A plus B which is like quarter circle back B it, the, the second hit is still unsafe on block so the so, so moves like quarter circle back A from soul charge and quarter circle back uh, a plus A plus um, B are the more recommended options out of it. Another nice perk also out of um, Soul Charge is when it wears off, Cassandra stays in Divine Force. So that's a nice per that's a nice perk of um, Cassandra's uh, Soul Charge. All right, guys, that's it for now. Just a couple more tidbits that I want to go over. If you do any in while under Divine Force, if you do any of those kind of ground electricity moves, like let's say Divine Force one A plus B. These moves are special mids, so that means they can be blocked either standing or crouching. But they cause a lot of chip damage, so whether it gets guarded or not is not really the worst thing in the world. Like, it's not really that bad for you. And uh, other things, Cassandra has like a couple unblockables, like her 4-4-A plus B. The initial hit of this is actually is a low, which I'm not really sure why they bother to do that, because I mean, it's an unblockable, so you can't block it anyway. So whether it's a mid or low doesn't really matter too much, but that's what it is. No, that's like a pretty standard unblockable. Uh, the unblockable is a bit more interesting is there 8A plus B. You do have to fully charge it, but whether it hits the opponent or not, it causes a ground shake which um, causes the opponent to to stumble so you would be at um, frame advantage after that. Try and get in like a free attack or so afterwards. Um, if you don't directly hit the opponent with this, then the opponent can do either a crouch block or they can jump over it to avoid it. Obviously if you do hit them, then it's unblockable, and it does a decent amount of damage. Oh, and uh, last thing I want to go over for now. Cassandra has two critical edges. This is her a standard critical edge. Does 80 damage, and puts you into Divine Force. Now, if you're under Divine Force, you get a better critical edge. And it looks freaking awesome, too. And you get 95 damage, but it um, it counts as a holy it counts as a holy smite move, so it uses up your divine force. And if you ha needed any guard gauge to be recovered, then 
Well, if you need any dark gauge to be recovered, then it would do that. Alright guys, that's it for now. If you have any further questions, you can feel free to contact me on my YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. So that means uh, leaving a comment down below. Uh, you can check out my other um, Soul Calibur 6 guys just to get a little overview of some other characters. And if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to join Top Tier Fighters. The support does help. Anyways, this is Force Nature signing off. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Top Tier Tips. Now that's what I call a critical hit.